The missing piece to a great Wi-Fi is control. If you want quality out of your Wi-Fi network, you have to take control. And this presentation, the rest of this presentation, is meant to allow you, even though you may not have a CWNE certification, to be able to start to begin to understand what's going on in your Wi-Fi network and be able to configure it so that it has the best opportunity to work properly. It all kind of starts with the wireless LAN lifecycle. We've simplified the lifecycle here. And the point being is the wireless LAN lifecycle in this case has four steps. First of all, monitoring, followed by assessments, followed by recommendations, followed by re remediation. This is a never-ending cycle. It always starts off with monitoring. We are always monitoring our Wi-Fi networks. Now, we may not be sitting down with uh, Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer to, to uh, assess our network or to monitor the network, but we might be just listening to what our end users are saying. The Wi-Fi network's not working properly. It's slow. I keep getting kicked off. I can't roam properly. This is the scuttlebutt that comes across that many times is our first indication that the Wi-Fi network is not being all that it can be. And that's when we should take our first steps. And the first step would be to assess the network to determine whether or not there's a problem. Sometimes it's user error. But with Wi-Fi, there are so many things that can go wrong. To be honest with me, I just assume the Wi-Fi network is uh, acting poorly until I can prove that it's not. It's almost always the Wi-Fi network. So we start there. We assume there's a problem. We need to try to figure out what that is. How do we assess it? You need tools. The problem with Wi-Fi is that you can't see it. It's not like an Ethernet cable. You can take an Ethernet cable, look at the end of it. You can see if all the connectors are, are working. You can plug it into a, uh, into a um, switch, and you can see if you get a uh, connectivity LED to, to power up. There's things that you can visually inspect when it comes to, to uh, a, a wired network. With Wi-Fi, it's all out here. It's in the air interface, the airspace around you, and there's no way to tell. So we have to use tools, specific software tools and hardware, that will allow us to visualize what's going on in this RF environment. Here's one that everyone can, can use. Now, we bring this one up because it's one of the, f one of the very few ones that works on uh, Apple Mac operating system, OS X and is, is very is professional grade, but it's very inexpensive. This program sells for $19.99 retail. That's, yes, $20, not $2,000 like some of the other programs. And uh, it's very good. It will, it's very powerful, easy to use, and following the steps in this tutorial, anyone could use this tool to determine whether or not their Wi-Fi network is, is operating properly. There are other tools. We don't sell this. The, uh, the uh, publisher of this program doesn't even know we're mentioning it right now. Um, however, uh, we've tested it and it's good. There are some other examples. As I said, this one is specifically for Apple and uh, OS X. If you're using Windows, you might try another inexpensive one somewhere in the same ballpark for cost, and it's called Insider. That's uh, I-N-S-S-I-D-E-R and that's from Metageek, that's a great product. And then there's a, a large number of very expensive professional grade tools that, that of course will, will do just as good a job, in some cases better, but this is all we need and this is the one we've selected for the remainder of this presentation. Here's some different types of tools that you will need in addition if you wanna take this further. Now in this presentation, we're only gonna bring up uh, about 10 of the top level baseline best practices that you can discover yourself. These are some of the most important ones though. So by following through and checking these baseline best practices, let, let me put it this way. If these are not properly set, doesn't matter how new your equipment is, or how expensive your equipment is, or what tools you own, if these aren't set properly, you're never gonna get great Wi-Fi. So start with these before you think about upgrading your infrastructure hardware system before you think about doing a rip and replace on your access points. Check these first and make sure they're set properly because if you were to just put in new hardware and leave these baseline best practices uh, in a state that's, that's not optimal, 
you won't have much better performance with the new gear and you will have spent a lot of money for it. no real good reason okay so these are other tools this one up here upper left this is a screenshot from the tool we'll be using throughout the remainder of the presentation here's another one this is a, a canned uh, type of diagnostic utility from NetScout. This is called AirCheck G G2 and it's very popular. It's a, a great utility. We have a tutorial on using this to perform these same tests if you're interested in that. And then when we have our WITS um, field engineers come out to your site on your behalf, we're more likely to use a tool like Air Magnets Wi-Fi Analyzer to perform these discovery operations. There's a lot more features here. Once again, this is overkill for these 10 best practices, but we can go a lot, lot deeper looking for many of the uh, secondary issues that, that can occur in Wi-Fi. So these are some of the top rated professional grade Wi-Fi discovery applications. It's not often you'll hear me include a $20 program as a professional grade application, but I'd say that one and Insider qualify to be in the same league with these two to five thousand dollar programs down here. In addition, our engineers would probably have to have a, uh, a larger tool set, but I don't recommend this for everybody. We would have things like spectrum analyzers, site survey applications, protocol analyzers, and throughput testing utilities. Those are all things you could grow into, but just by starting up here, we'll give you a pretty good picture of your network. So I said that this is enterprise and these are best practices for enterprise. Part of the problem over the years when we come out to do diagnostics uh, for a customer, we've noticed that we end up handing off a huge, thick, very technical report for remediation recommendations. And that's all well and good as long as the customer understands what all the recommendations are. So it's been traditional that once we come out, do the uh, assessment, make our uh, recommendations and hand those off to you, now it's up to you. You could, of course, hire us to do the remediation, but many times you'll have your own people do it or your own vendors do that too. And what we found in the past is a lot of times it just doesn't get done. And part of it, we feel, has been that there's been a disconnect between the report and actually implementing those changes. So at WITS, we've uh, come up with a, a newer, cleaner way of defining what's going on with your network. And we just use this simple idea of a scorecard. And we've got five categories here. And the categories have different key performance indicators within them. And some of these we would always check and some of them will be optional depending on the type of Wi-Fi network that you're going to use. For instance, if you were to have uh, a warehousing uh, type of a scenario, that would be different than if you're trying to put Wi-Fi aboard a ship or if you were trying to implement uh, a school Wi-Fi. So these are the categories, access points, radio frequency, RF is the environment around you. We have interference sources, then we have operations of the network, and then we have security. And we use this because it's kind of a common metaphor. Five stars is good. Five stars is best. Uh, one star, not, not so good. OK. Using this scorecard, and for this example in our case study, we're using the market profile for education but that could change for, we have different profiles for any different types of uh, enterprise uh, uh, infrastructures. And in this case, I'd like to point out several of the things that you can, uh, some, some of the things that you can do on your own, some of the things that you probably would want us to do on your behalf. So to begin with, uh, the most important column over here on the left, access points. Most, most of this can be checked with a visual inspection. For instance, access points, you can tell by looking whether or not it's been mounted and placed correctly, whether the cabling is correct, though you may need a cable tool. Antennas are something else that we can check visually. 